When I tell people I'm a surgeon, they get this look. I need more visibility if I'm ever gonna whipple this cross stitch. Their eyes go a little wide. A quiet awe dawns on their face. I can't see a damn thing. And I know what that look is saying. It's saying, to me, you are a god. Someone get me some suction, please. The most days, we don't feel like one. I got a page, talk to me. Quinn. Because when a god fails, they become legend. Push to a Vespa drill. But when we do, come on, come on, give me a pulse. We just become the flat line in someone else's heartbreak. <sighs> and they're sure as hell isn't anything legendary about that. I am prepping for the world's first ever semi-sizoid tame impala, so this better be good. Come with me to Peru. Quinn, I've told you a hundred times, I did not come to this hospital to fall in love and elope with you. I came here to save lives. No, Cass, hear me out. We're surgeons, okay? We were born for this. But when I was in that shipwreck and I finally washed ashore, I realized it wasn't the doctors or the medicine that kept me alive. It was the thought of coming home to you. You don't need an OR to save lives, Cass. You saved mine the moment you walked into it. And where was your thought of me when you published our clinical study with only your name on it? Can we at least talk about this? Meet me in the on-call room. There's nothing more to say. I loved you, and you knew that I would have gone anywhere in the world with you. And you took advantage of it. Now excuse me. I have to go make medical history for a second time. Doctor, she's coding. Get, get, I'm coming, okay? I'll take a double tonight, Ron. You wanna talk about it? Thanks, but I really don't think you'd understand. Try me. Okay. I was performing a bilateral tracheotomy and a stage three double blastectomy when my lasso stitch snagged on a bone fragment. Three seconds was all it took and they were gone. Do you got any words of wisdom for that? Didn't think so. Actually, I was gonna say that the losses never get any easier. And then I was gonna ask you for some more details because I've been trying to solve that exact problem with my lasso stitch procedure since I published it 10 years ago. You're the Dr. Cameron Sessions? Your journals on bovine pancreatic shedding are the reason I went to med school. Well, I'm really glad you did. You should stop by my clinic sometime. Maybe we can improve upon my procedure. God damn it. What happened? We couldn't call the bleeding in the TI-83. Her tissue was like cotton candy in my hands and I just froze. I can't go back in there, Quinn. Cass. Yes, you can. Look at me. No, absolutely not. You are an artist in the OR, okay? I'll admit it, a risk taker, but I am not. I am walking symmetry. I am math. I cannot go back in there if I don't know my next step. But you do know, Cass. Just look at me, okay? Remember that night? Just you and me and that bottle of 73 Prosecco. Quinn, this isn't helping. Do you remember what you said to me? I... <sighs> the fifth vertebrae is the window to the... Can you cover my three o'clock consult? Go. <sighs> Quinn? Don't go to Peru. Dr. Blaze, let's see if you have what it takes for trauma. Flaunters, thermostat down to negative 40 degrees because you are in the middle of a frozen tundra and your patient is bleeding out. You just pushed 10 milligrams of Pantene Pro-V, but now you need to pack the wound. Sinclair, what do you use? Gauze? Gauze? It's standard protocol, I believe. Sinclair, if you want a medical career built on pretty stitches and following protocol, Cartography is on the 10th floor, but down here, we don't have time for protocol. Okay, this is trauma. You're gonna need to do a little better than gauze. Okay, I could rip out the cotton lining for my sleeping bag and use that. No, you burned your sleeping bag the night before because it was contaminated. Oh, weird. Uh, They're uh, dying, Sinclair, they're dying. Tear out the tear stained pages from my dead lover's journal. Jesus, Sinclair. I love it. Welcome to trauma. Flaunters. God damn it, he's coding. Cut the lights. I said cut the lights, flaunters. We're going in dark. Doctor, what the hell is going on? Respectfully, Chief, this is my OR. 
Respectfully, your OR isn't on the battlefield anymore. It's in my hospital, and I'm not about to authorize you to do a surgery in the dark. Chief, what's the weather like today? I don't know, sunny. Sunny, with elevated UV levels, which for the rest of us is inconsequential, but for our patient, Mr. Rhodes here, who is salmonellic and was just injected with anti-self-explanatories, if there's even a hint of UV light in this room, when those meds hit his bloodstream, his heart's about as good as a grenade and a slice of toast. Now, Flanders and I had two minutes to intervene before you chimed in. I'm guessing we're down to what? About 90 seconds? Proceed. Thanks, Chief. Oh, and uh, cut the lights on your way out. What the hell was that? That was my crepiotomy. Your patient had a desiccated census. Protocol calls for microfiche. Their kidneys had stopped responding to the Hollandaise. They were going to bleed out. Except they didn't. <sighs> yeah, barely. You got lucky. No, you got lucky. Flanders, can you give us a moment, please? You listen to me. You are the best goddamn surgeon this hospital has ever seen, but you are arrogant and you are reckless. And when it's working for you, it is one hell of a show, trust me. But it will fail you one day. And when that day comes, I'm not gonna be the one to break your fall. Are we understood? Where is the surgeon who risked it all to perform the world's first ever caramelized dichotomy? That is the surgeon I left the battlefield to come work for. Well, that's too bad because that surgeon died the same day her patient did. Stick to protocol, Dr. Blaze, or I will report you to the board. I hope none of you have holiday plans. We got an avalanche at a local ski resort. I need all hands on deck. Flaunters, turn the cafeteria into the ICU. What do you got? Damn it. She's hyperbolic with an alliterated Memphis. Take her to OR2 and I'll meet you there. Chief, step aside, I've got this one. Dr. Blaze. That is my sister. I have to be the one to operate on her. Can I get an isosceles in here, stop? Dr. Blaze, I need you to look at me. I know all you can focus on right now is the fear of losing her, and that is exactly why I cannot let you operate. Now your sister's heart needs an iambic pentatonic euphemism. I will get you any surgeon on this planet that you want. You just tell me who to call. You, I want you. And Flaunters. Flaunters, you're scrubbing in. Chief, my parents say I, he died when I was three. She always looked after me, you know? She always looked after me. I can't let her down. I can't Please. let her. I've got her. Her magna carta levels are low. Flaunters, push 50 BCC of superlatives and then do a floral uptake. Don't let him boss you around like that, Flaunters. Hey, you're awake. Yeah, well, you never respond to my dinner invites, so I had to stop by your work instead. Yeah, well. I'll take a category five spleen of coronation over dinner plans any day, but not when it's my big sister on the operating table. It might have been worse. Dr. Winray is a rock star though. I still can't believe what you did for me. Well, she's a surgeon. It's what we do. Okay, well, not many surgeons will double as your organ donor too. <laughs> what? They didn't tell you? When you weren't a match, she gave her dorsal lobe to me. A dorsal lobe transplant on yourself? Dr. Blaze. Chief, what the hell were you thinking? I had to save your sister. Tried paging. There's an avalanche in the west wing. All the elevators are flooded. No one can get through. How'd you know to come find me? Just a feeling, I guess. Mm. Mackenzie, your balsamic artery is swelling and it's causing your auto mutual system to go into shock. Hey, 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 stay with me, okay? What's, uh, what's your favorite song? What? Your favorite song, Ken's, what is it? <laughs> if I lay here. Uh, if I just lay here. Would you lie with me? And Shit, 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 shit. Ugh. Ken's, I gotta do a gastroterodactyl, okay? This is gonna hurt. Please, I trust you. On my count. I need OR2 stat, her balsamics already in V-flax. Flaunters! Dr. Goldenrod, what the hell are you doing here? Whoa, 
Is that an arterial insinuation? Not really my style, but I guess I can work with it. Well, while you were getting your teeth polished for your next Good Morning America segment, I was on a raft in the middle of the Pacific doing a heart transplant with half a shoelace and a wine opener. So yeah, I guess you could say our styles are a little different. Whoa, whoa, doc, take it easy, okay? You did exactly what you were supposed to do. Buy us just enough time so that I could get here on a flight from New York and do the real work. I'll take it from here. Like, you don't even know her case. Like, she's, she's allergic to radiated olfactories and fried shellfish. Are there any more fun facts you'd like to share with me or could I get on with saving her life now? Why don't you go home and get some rest, doc? You look exhausted. Where the hell is Flaunters? Rough day, Dr. Blaze. Seamless, 18-hour subjugated Corolla. Went out of nowhere in the last 20 minutes. Polyester levels dropped. Couldn't get them above 1840 AD. Had to call it. Brutal. What about you, Chief? Please, you just saved my life by performing a gastroterodactyl in the hospital basement the other week. I think we can be on a first name basis at the bar. Fair enough. You know, that reminds me, right before search and rescue came in and found us, you were about to tell me something. What was it? Doesn't matter what I was gonna say. Come on, it's been killing me. When we finally got you out, your husband was there to greet us. Trust me, whatever I was gonna say is irrelevant. We're separated. Can someone please explain how it's possible that I don't have my patient scantrons yet? Flaunters, can you check on that please? And bring me a lettuce wrap. Chief, you paged? I made a few calls. There's an open head of trauma position over at Cedar Wind Grove. It's yours if you want it. Whoa, are you firing me? 87, Blaze. You breached protocol 87 times and that's just this month. If I transfer you, this all goes away for both of us. And is that really all I am to you? A PR nightmare you just sweep under the rug? Blaze, you performed a gargulated hat trick on a severed belly on. The patient was pre-cinematic. So bypass it with the bevel loop, it's why I invented it. Their heart was already in Mad Libs, I saved their life. And I'm trying to save your career. So let me, I don't need you to save me, Kens. But the last thing I wanna be to you is a problem. So, I quit. Problem solved. Still drinking those vault whiskey rumbles, I see. You look good, Dr. Blaze. I know you didn't call me here to flatter me, Chief. You were looking at yesterday's scantrons of a double-edged- Double-edged William Sonoma. Jesus, it's beautiful. And deadly. And you're the only surgeon in the world bold enough to operate on it. You want me to come back for this? Trust me, it's not an easy ask. Not after how you left. I'll do it on one condition. We scrub in together, with flaunters, obviously. Don't patronize me, Blaze, we both know you don't need me. You know, I'm not the bold one here, Kenz. People always think the most powerful part of the storm is when it's loudest. It's not. It's the quiet clarity that comes after. And you both in the OR. You taught me that. I'm sorry I had to leave to learn it. Can you do the surgery or not? Tell flaunters to study up. Flaunters, why don't I have a cappuccino in my... Yeah, okay, and? well, I'm sorry, guys, but these possum levels are not going to cut it. Not in my OR. Cass? <laughs> Blazy. Holy shit, what's it been? Like, 10 years? Oh, God, please, don't remind me. Last I heard, you were down in Peru with Quinn doing, what was it, respiratory bidet research? Yep. Quinn stayed behind. You know, I'm just here helping out as best I can. Oh, yeah? Helping out with what? Filling in for... Dr. Winray is chief of surgery, of course. Well, we must have our wires crossed because I'm here to perform a surgery with Dr. Winray. It's a, it's this double-edged William Sonoma. She showed me the scantrons herself and I mean, shit looks like a death sentence if you ask me. Please, you're not performing the surgery with Dr. Winray. You're performing it on her. Those were her scans she showed you. Damn it. Please. No. 
No, don't you look at me like that. Not, if you look at me like that, it means you're about to give me a speech. And if you give me a speech, that means that what's next? What's next is that I go in there and I have to call it and I'm please. not, I'm not calling this one, not Ken's. Please. Okay, not her. Please, 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 please. No speech, no speech. I don't have a speech, okay, but. Okay, you remember back in med school, that night, we ended up at that weird lit department party? The night of Quinn's birthday? Yeah, 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 the night of Quinn's birthday. Okay, so this guy, while we're there, this guy comes up to me and he hands me a poem to read. And I read it and I'm like, I hate this, it sucks. And he goes, that's because poetry isn't meant to be read, it's meant to be heard. And then he proceeded to whisper it in my ear, but the point is, we've been in that OR, treating this double-edged William Sonoma like it's fiction, but it's not. It's a poem. It's not about what we can see in there, it's what we can... Cass. Cass. <laughs> Blonder! Tadpole. Cass, talk to me. William Sonoma's been fully alliterated. Excellent. Flaunters, vibe check. ACDC at 12.5 and holding strong. DRC touching down. Hopefully it holds. I'm in. Shit. OC's crashing. Cass, how's the MCU? MCU's still holding at 1200 AD, but I don't like the look of that ACDC. Blaze, we should call it. No way. Not this close. Damn it, ACDC crashing. MCU not far behind. Kens, I need two more seconds. I need two more seconds from you, hear me? MCU at 800 BCE. I got this. 600, almost there. Dr. Blaze, visual on the aux cord. Got it, no one move. Come on, Kens. Come on. Just for a minute, I'd fall asleep and not dream about you. We got you. We got you, Kens. Thank God. I didn't take the chance to tell you this when I could, and now I'm worried it might be too late. So, I know it's a bad time, but here goes. Kens, I. Please, Kens, welcome back. Holy shit. You got it. Yeah, you are officially William Sonoma free. <laughs> I knew you could do it. How many protocols did you break? None. A few. You know, I was just having this dream. You were there. I wish I could remember you. It was like you were about to say something to me. I'm sure it wasn't anything important. No, no, you sounded so serious. It was like, it was like you're about to profess your love to me. What? It's just for a minute. <laughs> I'm gonna get you some more water. Blonders? You think you got what it takes to be in my trauma department? I respect that. Back row, you got any house plants? Oh, chrysanthemums. I hear they're beautiful this time of year. Get rid of them. Give them to your grandma. I don't care. When you are here, I need you here. Not wondering if you watered your plants on Saturday. Second row, you're about to close the new patient's Mediterranean Nintendo when all of a sudden there's a volcano in out three. Nothing you can't handle for a Tuesday except this time. This time, second row, your patient's allergic to lava. What do you do? What do you do? No textbooks, no textbooks in the trauma department, people. Your eighth grade theater camp is a better use to you here than that fancy medical school your parents love to name drop at dinner parties, okay? It's not about following the rules. It is about welcome back, Dr. Winray. Falling in love. It's about walking the edge of death and destruction with someone and saying, hey, I'm right here, I'm not going anywhere. Not till we're through. Shipwreck in L3, let's go, let's go, flaunters. Why are you looking at me like that? You're scrubbing in. It's good to see you back in here, Chief. Well, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. It's the honor of my life to save yours. <clears throat> Dr. Blaze, was there something that you wanted to say to- Sorry, I know I'm late. Paparazzi found me at the airport again. Dr. Goldenrod. Sorry, why is Doc Hotshot here? Whew, I don't know. Maybe because of the one, two, three Tad Mallory's I've won in my career. But you wouldn't know anything about those, would you, Dr. Blaze? I've called you both here because patient X has a relegated gerund, which we all know can be repaired with a simple Bridgerton stitch. Surely you didn't fly me in from New York for this. Where did the patient fall on the Homer Iliad scale? 800 BCE. Then this isn't just a gerund we're dealing with. This patient's heart is borderline cast iron skillet. Exactly. And I need you two to figure out how to fix it. We both know the standard procedure is to treat the entry wound with shiplap and then to perform a simple Bridgerton stitch. 
I propose something entirely different. Featherington stitch. Absolutely not. There hasn't been a report of a single successful Featherington stitch from any hospital. That's because I've only ever performed it in a moving helicopter and a submarine. Well, it is bold. I'll give you that. I may not have any Tad Mallory's lining my shelves like you, Dr. Goldenrod, but if there's one place I thrive when there's a life on the line, it's outside of my element. <laughs> I can see that, Dr. Blaze. Nice work. Consider me in. As long as Flandre scrubs in with me, of course. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Flandre's always scrubs in with me. Oh, how do I put this in terms that you understand? Flandre's assists me, or I tell the chief that I respectfully decline surgery. Shouldn't be a problem, Dr. Blaze. You thrive out of your element, right? GPA is dropping. Look, I'm gonna need you to make a move here, kid, um, or else you can be I, the one to explain to the family that you are a dear What in God's name is going on in here? Your resident is choking at a routine biblioblast. Flaunters. How do you make your coffee in the morning? What? What? They're below magna cum laude. We don't have time for- Shut it, Dr. Goldenrod. Flaunters, take me through it. You have a French press, right? French press, yes. Okay, first I boil the water. And then I grind the beans. Uh-huh, and then? And then I put four scoops of the grounds into the French press, and then I pour just like an inch of the boiling water to oh. pre-soak the grounds. And uh, do you need me to keep going? Because I know what no, I need to do. go, go, Scaffling. go. <laughs> Binoculars? Trigonometry, I need a read. Spatula. Yo, Dr. Blaze. Thanks for that in there. I guess I'm just not really used to all the babysitting you gotta do around here. Yeah, man, just takes a special kind of surgeon, I guess. Hey, listen, don't ever speak to one of my residents like that again. Flaunters is brilliant, just learning. If you can't see that, that's on you. Good morning, Chief. You need to sign off on this bilingual non sequitur. Patients <laughs> insisting on a routine. Sorry. I, I, I just got a funny text back the morning after text. Day one, well, I see. They really did. Good. Yeah, I mean, you're glowing. Thank you both for meeting me here. Um, the first order of business is we have a new consultant joining us today, all the way from Los Angeles. She's gonna help us identify some here, possible. Dr. Sylvan, impeccable timing. Allow me to introduce you to Dr. Blaze, our head of trauma, and this is consulting. Is that the official LA term for when you give up on your dream of being a surgeon? No, Dr. Goldenrod. Giving up is what you did on our marriage. <clears throat> is this going to be a problem? No. Yes. I'm going to be bringing all these characters back really soon for a really epic episode, so please subscribe. And at the end here, I have the first ever Dr. Blaze video. Um, it was too low quality to include in the overall compilation, but it's the video where I first discovered his character. It's completely improv, and you will see the moment where I say, flaunters, for the very first time. Forget everything you learned in med school. Welcome to trauma. Rodney, drop your scalpel. There's no guarantee you'll ever have one again. What if there's a metal shortage? What are you gonna use? I'll tell you what I used. Working my third term in the Coast Guard in the Bermuda Triangle, pulled up this couple, had to open them end to end. All I had on board, my bomb and a shattered light bulb. Saved them both. Invite to the wedding. Saunders, you're stranded in the desert. You need to find a way to give your patient a phosphorescent blood transfusion. What do you use? Too slow. Your belt buckle and a handful of sand. Flaunters. Can you please get me a cappuccino? No espresso, all foam. Eight sugars. Turners. You married? Get divorced. There's no time for love in trauma. If your personal life isn't in shambles by the end of your shift, you are not doing it right. We all know that standard procedure for treating a relegated gin. We all know is to treat the entryway with That's it. Relegated gerund is to treat the foyer with shiplap. Foyer is to treat the entry, is to treat the entry with shiplap. Is to treat the, is to treat the entry with shiplap, is to treat the entry wound with shiplap.